Go ahead, take it away. All right. Good morning, Menachem. Not sure where this is going to uh, take us. This week we were talking about how to make the Parsha a little more real and accessible. And we said, well, let's talk about it. And then one of us said, and let's record ourselves. So I guess in the age of 2024, that's what we're going to do. What do you have uh, on tap for this Parsha? Well, the truth of the matter is, I was sitting and we were talking about the idea of to literally live the Hasidic lifestyle or even the Jewish lifestyle, but certainly the Hasidic lifestyle. The community is an important component. And we were asking the question, could was Judaism or what it was the Hasidic life designed to uh, be practiced alone, or is it critical to practice it with other people? And that was the discussion. I feel like I triggered you when, you when I brought that up. Were you triggered? <laughs> I was, because I think about this a lot, especially because if you think about in the, within the Chabad, where the Rebbe encouraged people to go out into the world and to leave their native community and think about sort of creating a new community and creating a new environment where one could celebrate Judaism and celebrate Hasidic life. So thinking about, could you do it alone? Do you need a community? That's that, These are the thoughts lingering in my mind. And then I open the Parsha. And then you have to remember that I live on a college campus. So we'll, we'll get, will you get to me or it's all about theory? Start in the Torah and then, and then hopefully we get, we get, we get to real life. All right, let's do it. What okay. do you have? What is in the Parsha? The Parsha, you have the two final mitzvot of the Torah. And that is number one, everybody has to write a Torah scroll. Okay, so today you may not write a Torah scroll, but you fulfill the mitzvah by buying a Jewish book. Okay, the other mitzvah, second to last mitzvah, is the mitzvah of Hakel. Once in seven years, all Jewish people had to meet in Jerusalem together and hear the Torah being read from the king, men, women, and children. That wasn't about study because the young ch infant children. It wasn't about study because infants don't study. It was about experiencing the Torah as a community together with other people. You got now, two mitzvahs regarding Torah, but very different approaches. Very Did I different. get you? Absolutely. Well, how would I define it? I would say the book is the part of the Torah that you could study and recreate in your house. You could sit in your dining room. The whole idea of every person should write a, to a Torah scroll is that you don't go to a central shul to hear the Torah reading. You have a Torah in your own home, in your dining room, in your basement, wherever you need to go. You're sitting, you can read the Torah. It's a solid not activity. I'm sorry? Why is that Why enough? Why is that not enough? Good question. Well, it's enough for seven years. But after a while, it seems the Torah is telling us you have to connect to other people. There's an overarching experience that you cannot experience on your own. When you're sitting with other people, men, women, children, adults, infants, there is going to be an experience that you cannot, a critical experience that you cannot create on your own. And these are the last two mitzvahs. So like the last will and testament. Correct. And I think that each has an advantage. And if we had the time, we could start thinking, contemplating what is the advantage of each. But it's clear that That's way coming too theoretical. To... Well, we're here for practical. If this is a short conversation, my next question to you is, how do we live that in, in 2024, where, first of all, we don't have the base of Mikdash and Hakil, A, and B, I don't even know how many people are really studying Torah personally. So we're, we're, we're lacking on both ends. Can you Can you bring it home? I'm, that's why I'm here with, with together with you. We need the community. We have to put. We have to so do. You get the theory, and I have to. And I have to make it real. I wasn't prepared for uh, for uh, for you to throw it back at me. I thought you were the rabbi. No, no, no. You're you say I'm a rabbi too. You're a rabbi, and I think you're a rabbi that I think you focus a lot on creating community. I think you have tens of students, maybe a hundred students, every week in your home coming together to celebrate as a community. So I think the hakel part, the gathering part, is important in in what you do. I would say that. I would say that. Every person has to ask themselves, "What does this text mean to me? How do I interpret this? This this the Torah? How does this story apply to me? What does it mean in my life?" In addition to that, I have to see how does it connect me to other people. How does this make me closer to other Jewish people? How does it make me closer to the mission that we're all trying to achieve? One second, one second, one second. 
you're way too theoretical. Your first point was that this is a practical lesson about whether Judaism is meant to be individual or experiential. The experience in the base of Mikdash, Hakel, once in, in seven years, was was extremely practical and experiential. And when I asked you to interpret it for a modern time, your answer was, see every lesson in the Torah as both individual and communal. I'm no. talking about a, a, a communal experience, my friend. Is there a difference between the way you study or the way you think about something when you're sitting alone or you're sitting with a group of people? How does it change? How does that experience change for you? Of course, but why are we limited to this example in the in the realm of studying Torah? If the whole point is we need to experience Judaism as a community, not just study Torah as a community. Correct, correct, correct. You're right. But I'm staying, I'm staying within the mitzvah of Hakka, which is primarily the reading of the Torah. But 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 you're right that the, that the Torah introduces it Liman Yilmud Liman Yishmu Uliman Yilmudu. And if I'm not mistaken, that they should study and learn, if I'm not mistaken, and they should fear God. They should be in awe of this overarching experience. So it's not just Torah, but it starts from the Torah. It's clearly a mitzvah to come to the temple and hear the Torah. The goal is not academic per se. The goal is not to understand and learn. But through the experience of learning Torah with other people, you're going to get an experience of the awe of God, of recreation of the experience of Sinai. Now, I'm just trying to think about this. What does it mean, even within Torah study itself? In other words, how does Judaism look when you celebrate it alone? And how does it look differently when you celebrate it with somebody else? And what are the advantages to each? That's what I'm trying to think about. This is what gets interesting. You and I have different personalities and different communities and different challenges. And for some reason, because of your experience, you're harping on interpreting this Dvar Torah into two forms of Torah study. And I am insistent that I want it to be super practical. When I'm going to be on Friday night with 100 students, the question is not how do we interpret this aspect of Torah as you take it as a person, as you take it as a community. I'm trying to figure out how you get college students who live on a campus completely unconnected to a Jewish or Torah-centric community that they should enjoy Judaism without the trappings of community. Because even though they come to Shabbos, they don't have the, the, the true nature of community. They don't have the Torah aspect of the community. Okay, Do you see so what I'm I, saying? That you're, you're, you're I, stuck yeah. in your theory. I'm thinking a little bit different. I'm thinking about, it's easy to come to a community and say, I celebrate my Judaism as a community. I come to Shul on Rosh Hashanah and I pay my dues, so to speak, with my presence by the fact that I come and I listen to the rabbi talk and I listen to the cantor sing. And that's the communal aspect of Judaism in my life. The question is, do you take a Torah scroll home? Are you taking a copy home? Now, I don't just mean the, the, the actual book, but I mean, when you go back to your dorm, or when you go back to your dining room, and you're now uh, the host of the dinner of a Friday night dinner. And now the question is, now have you internalized something? Have you internalized something that you could now share with your smaller group or that you can experience alone? Or do you have to go to shul or do you have to go into the Hasidic world? You have to go to a Hasidic gathering to be able to experience the day or the or, or Judaism or, the, or this particular um, feeling you're trying to recreate? Do I need a community or can I do it on my own? And the answer, of course, is both. But if I can only do it as a community, then maybe I'm lacking the internalization. And if I'm only doing it alone, maybe I'm stuck in my own ego, like you point out, that I'm sitting in my own world. I don't realize it's a broader world. I have to connect to you. I have to realize your experience. So that's what I'm trying to say, is that both are critical. And if you have one without the other, you may be missing something important. Just to end, talking about last will and testaments, wasn't the, the Rebbe's last sifsa related to Vayakel Pukude in this exact question yes 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 i want to leave that as a cliffhanger for the next conversation a memory too much but yes the idea was to create community it was vayakal gathering gathering as a community but the rabbi always emphasized that a community is a collection of individuals and the community doesn't erase the individual identity of each individual within the community to the contrary the community is a place where each person's unique individuality can be amplified and expressed and be part of something greater but yes that's that's a big that's a big subject within the rebbe's teachings and it's the last thing 
we merited to hear from the Rebbe himself. So thank you, Yudi. I feel part right. of a greater community. This has been very, very inspiring for me and meaningful. We're already bridging communities from Connecticut to DC, from uh, adults to college students. Unbelievable. Indeed. Thank you. All right.